Uh, Representative, I have just, for you and your caucus, I have a few very simple questions, and hopefully you can answer these. Will this budget reduce property taxes? We put ourselves in a position to give local communities the ability to do so. Can you quickly explain that? Because I don't see anything in this budget that reduces property taxes. Well, if you take a look at the uh, evidence-based funding formula, $50 million of that is to go to uh, property tax stabilization. For what? Property tax stabilization. It's a part of the evidence-based formula. Uh, I, I don't think that that's going to happen. Let me ask you another question. Is there anything in this budget that's going to improve test scores for our students? We have the vast majority of students in our K through 12 system don't read, don't write, don't do math at grade level. It's a great question, Representative. Absolutely. There are, so, there are a number of um, programs that are slated to do specifically that. So uh, when you look at, for example, the Smart Start Initiative, it's a cradle uh, to career concept that gets our children into high quality early childhood education opportunities at a much earlier age in their life. The goal with that program is to get young people centered in uh, reading, writing, learning, learning, getting social emotional skills, the ability to cope within a classroom so that they can continue to learn, which will ultimate, ultimately result in higher test scores. Have, or as one example. Have we not done that in the past? Is this all brand new programs that we're just now starting to improve? So for example, Representative, I don't know about in your community, but I know in my community and many others around the state, there is a, um, there's a waiting list for many young children across this state from zero to three to be able to get access to a quality early childhood program. One of the concepts that's a part of the Smart Start program is the EI, often known as um, early intervention. Oftentimes we're able to catch, uh, these early interventionists are able to catch children much earlier uh, than they would if they did so, not have that early intervention because many of these children uh, that get that, it. I would like to finish. Well, many of those really children that get that clock. EI support um, they are able to identify challenges at an early age to get those particular students on the right path to oftentimes get them um, an individualized education plan. We, we have over 9,000, well, we have many, many more kids that were waiting for scholarship opportunities, invest in kids, and obviously you didn't see fit to fund that this year. Um, moving on. Will this budget make communities safer? Representative, your time is up. Is there anyone who wants to yield? Representative Niemerg is yield. Will this, will this budget make communities safer? Absolutely. Uh, this budget invests in uh, community-based violence prevention. It invests in after-school programs. It also invests in law enforcement, uh, multiple cadet programs. So whether we're talking about uh, providing opportunities for young people to have access to um, adults in their lives that care about them, that want to pour and grow, that want to pour into them to help them grow into being um, all that they can be. That is a very important element of ensuring um, the safety of our communities. So we haven't been doing this in the past. This is another new program that you're starting this year. So what I can tell you is that there were years uh, that many of us remember where none of this was happening. And this, you know, safety like anything else, you don't turn it on and off with the lights, which is something that you have to have continued investments in if you want to see the, the results. Well, we've been funding these things for years and our communities aren't safer. I don't believe what you're doing is safer. Will this budget reduce the debt on our taxpayers? Uh, Representative, we are we have a record nine credit upgrades, which is why you see the business community that is coming on support, uh, that is coming in as a supporter of this particular uh, budget measure. This budget adds $8 billion more in debt to our taxpayers, does it not? Please uh, clarify what you're talking about. No, it doesn't. Our current debt is 75, almost $76 billion. We just pass some more spending but, uh, obligations, borrowing obligations. 
that's going to add another massive burden to the taxpayers. And this is this budget doesn't does not address that. We're, we're going to continue to saddle our taxpayers. Uh, Madam Speaker, to the bill. To the bill. Thank you. You know, in 2019, when, when, we, when I first came here, Illinois had the nation's 10th highest tax burden. Today, we're the seventh highest tax burden. When states all around us are reducing their tax burdens, cutting income taxes all around us, Illinois continues to tax and spend and increase fees on our residents and on our businesses that makes us less competitive with the states around us. Our population continues to decline. Our businesses flee. We've talked about this earlier today. This budget is nothing, and I, I want to say this again, does nothing to improve the business climate, the safety of this residents, will not improve the test scores. We continue to pour money after money. Clark, your time is up. I will finish. Into the education system, our enrollment declines. We're spending record numbers of, of amount of money on education. If you vote for this budget, you are setting ourselves up please. for failure. This is not a balanced budget. This budget will not improve the lives of our citizens. And I hope that you would see that and vote no.